Once you've gotten to a certain level of doing these physical things and you start to recover some of the body functions a little more readily, you might feel like you hit a plateau, which is what happened for me. Cue music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two, Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. I've brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. Thank you for joining us here on the Autoimmune Hour with Sharon Saylor. Now, we don't want you to worry about taking too many notes. So you can join the Autoimmune Hours Courage Club, and we'll send you the transcripts and show notes from every episode. Sign up now at understandingautoimmune.com. Now, back to your host, Sharon Saylor. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour, Surviving to Thriving with Sharon Saylor. And it's my pleasure to be with you here tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Friday night, with a brand new episode of just amazing people and things that I find. and. Tonight, I am absolutely thrilled. I've been trying for a long time to have Tina Thrussell on. She is the co-founder of the Shindao Institute, and she is just awesome. Not only is she absolutely a joyful, fun person to be with, one of the happiest people I know, she's going to talk tonight about adrenal fatigue. And we haven't talked about that before, but I can so relate. And for the last 15 years, Tina has been offering people uplifting inspiration and sacred space for personal transformation as a speaker and a facilitator. She has also been of service as a NIA teacher, writer, editor, mindfulness trainer, personal coach, quest master, and a master hugger and lover of life. I love that. She is a master hugger. We saw each other down in San Diego a few months ago, and I said, you know, one of these days, girl, we got to get you on. And so we did. I have to kind of wrap both of us out in a way because we're both recovering type A personalities. <laughs> that was one thing we have in common. And she drove herself into exhaustion and full-blown adrenal fatigue a few years ago. And she has just been on this joyful recovery road, which I just find so wonderful and fits right into we are thrivers, not survivors here. So welcome, Tina. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon, for inviting me. It's an honor to be here, and it's exciting that we finally got our schedules to match. I know. It's awesome. It's great. Because one of the things I know that we both have related that we're both recovering type A personalities. And tell us a little bit about your story and what is full-blown adrenal fatigue? I mean, it sounds awful. It It is, it is awful, quite frankly. So, uh, you know, Type A personality, anyone who is one knows what that's all about. It's perfectionism. It's having to push, 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 go, 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 get it all right, get it all done, do it all yourself, and all at high speed. And (laughs) the challenge with that is that we have the central nervous system with adrenal system that is intended to respond to fight or flight emergency, right? In the old caveman days, when you were faced with a saber-toothed tiger, you drew upon that adrenal resource and it gave you a big burst of energy so you had time to escape that saber-toothed tiger. That's great in short bursts. But when you're drawing upon that adrenal system on a regular basis, which type A personalities will do because everything is urgent. There are a million saber-toothed tigers in our society. The, um, the phone that has to be answered now, the email that has to be taken care of this instant, the racing brain that won't let you sleep, all of these things put your brain into this false sense of constant emergency and it drains the adrenal system. And from there, you lose your strength, you lose your energy, you lose your ability to focus, Eventually, you lose your enthusiasm for life as you get totally burned out and exhausted. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, how do they know that's different from other things? Is it a process of elimination or are there tests you can take to find out it's your adrenals versus another thing? 
Well, you know, our medical system is not really good at recognizing adrenal fatigue, I admit. It wasn't our regular medical system that brought me to the awareness. Naturopaths, homeopaths are more likely to pick up on it. One of my godsends was this book, Adrenal Fatigue, the 21st Century Syndrome, written by Dr. James Wilson. Now, what he has within this book is a set of survey questions that you can go through and answer. He has a very simple skin test where you run your fingernail across your belly and depending on how long it takes for that red line to turn white is an indication of how well your adrenals are functioning. Oh, so wait, lot- wait, wait, Tina. <laughs> go back over. You run your fingernail over your belly? Yeah. So, you know, if you were to run your, your nail across your skin, it leaves a little red mark. Yeah. And then the length of time it takes for that red mark to disappear is an indication of how well your adrenals are functioning. Wow. I I think it's all connected to the circulatory system. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know that it works. There's also a, a follow your eyes in the mirror test that you can do. So it's all described very well in the book. So if you don't happen to find a doctor who is willing to do all of the blood tests, that will determine that your hormone levels have bottomed out. This is how you know it truly is adrenal fatigue. You're producing no more estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, cortisol, androgen. Your hormone levels are all incredibly low. In my case, they were like almost at zero. So I had no hormones left in my body. So I had nothing to draw from to do the basic everyday things of life. Share with us, Tina, what was the day that you recognized, oh my gosh, (laughs) this isn't working? So I had been noticing that I was tiring out more and more frequently, that I had less and less energy. Taking a short walk down the block, my legs would start to feel like jelly, like just really weak. All of this isn't right, but being type A, it's like, oh, I just need to get a little more rest or drink a glass of water. It'll be fine. It'll pass. This too shall pass. I'll I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. I kept doing that and doing that. In the intro, you mentioned that I am a Nia teacher. Nia is a blend of dance arts, martial arts, and healing arts. This brilliant fusion fitness technique. So I was teaching at that time six or seven classes a week on top of the other things that I was doing. Each class is an hour long. I went to one of my classes and I was laying out this styrofoam interlocking floor to dance on to protect my hips and knees. And I got down on the floor to put all these pieces of flooring together. And I was just like, uh, that's it. I can't get up. I well, that had to be scary. It was. It was. I had to lay down and I, my whole body started to shake. I was just quivering. And I thought, oh my God, like, yeah, what am I going to do? And I did what I always did. Okay, well, you're going to dig in and you're going to pull up that energy. And I did. I somehow managed to draw enough energy to pull myself up off the floor. I had a glass of water. I taught the class. At the end of the class, I was just vibrating. My little stereo, which is like five pounds, felt like 60 pounds. It was all I could do to carry it to the car. And I just sat there and vibrated for I don't know how long. And went, whoa, something is really wrong. This isn't going to just go away. And so I started this long haul of what do I do? I actually ended up having to hire a substitute teacher to teach all my classes. I had to stop everything. I went to bed and pretty much didn't get out of bed for three months is what happened. It was pretty scary, let me tell you, Sharon. So I discovered this book, and I don't even remember how bless whoever's heart told me about it. And I started to look at all of the recommendations that he made. And there are so many things that you can do. If you find that you're in the place of being very worn down like this. So some of the things that you can do are to really pay attention to your thinking patterns for starters. What are you focusing on? Get into some sort of meditation practice. Get into some slow breathing practice that will help you just slow your system down. Start consuming um, 
Himalayan sea salt, mineral salt, natural salt that's got all of these wonderful minerals that are a regular iodized table salt no longer has in it when they bleach everything out and then add iodine. You want to have, uh, and I still do it to this day, right? This is my maintenance program now. I pour some Himalayan salts into a bottle of filtered water and I leave it at my nightstand. In the morning, I give it a good shake. I have a couple swigs of salt water and I follow that with a glass of filtered water. So that's how I start my day. Oh, mine's very close, except you know what I do? Maybe, yeah. I don't know if it's right or not. I love Persian cucumbers. And I take just a couple oh. thin slices of Persian cucumber, takes the edge off the salt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you leave it sitting and floating in your water and you get just that little bit of refreshing cucumber taste. Yeah. So I don't know if that's part, if that works. But it, for me, I like it because it takes the edge off the salt. Nice. Well, the, the interesting thing about not using the cucumber is that one of the indications that you're actually showing some recovery is that when you first start drinking salt water, it doesn't taste salty. Like you need it so badly, it doesn't even taste salty. So as it starts to taste salty, you know you're getting better. You know awesome. that there is some recovery happening. So if you're getting to the point where it's like, ew, <laughs> throw, in the, <laughs> throw in the cucumbers. <laughs> now, I'm not throwing in a whole cucumber, guys. This is just, I take a couple of super thin slices and just sort of, you know, like you would with, with a lemon or something, just, just to change the, just to change the flavor a little bit. I just find fresh cucumber really makes my wa filtered water taste good. Yeah, it's a very refreshing taste. It's like um, putting fresh, fresh clipped mint into your water too, right? It's just there's yeah. something yeah, refreshing about that. Yeah. It's easier yeah. for me to drink than just filtered water or salt with Himalayan salt in the water. But yeah. a lot of the bottled waters we get now are, have all, everything filtered out of them, including the minerals that we need. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, well, it, it really is a foundational, fundamental tool that's so simple and so available. And you know, it's not rocket science, just drink some salt water every morning to start your day. But it's um, like one of those things you mentioned before, some breathing practices. Mm -hmm. Breathing is so common, thank heavens, but we absolutely overlook the power of breathing and how just a few simple deep breaths where you extend the out exhale, to let your body relax will change in a matter of a few seconds to a minute or so will change how you're feeling in, oh. your, in your whole body. And yet just like salt and water, I think they're so common that we overlook the simple solutions. Absolutely. And yet there's the kiss principle, right? Keep it simple, silly. <laughs> <laughs> simple, huh? A lot of people use another word at the end besides silly. But <laughs> silly works. <laughs> The so, simplest methods are the most effective, the most efficient, truly. The more complicated we get with trying to find a solution, the less likely we are to follow through, which means it's not at all effective. The only tools that are going to work are tools that we're willing to use. So I like to reference one-two breathing. You, you talked about extending the out-breath. One-two breathing is breathing in for a length of time, say, Start with breathing into the count of three, a nice slow breath in through the nose. Hold it for a couple of seconds and then take twice as long on the exhale and blow the breath out through the mouth. So if you're breathing in for three, holding for two seconds, then breathe out for six. That's really important. That balance of taking longer to breathe out than in really slows down your whole central nervous system and gets you into a calmer, more relaxed state which is really, really important with adrenal fatigue or any of the conditions leading up to that, there is this hyper activity that's going on in the body all the time that basically exhausts it. And you want to stop that hyperactivity. And you know what I love about the breathing techniques is you can do them anywhere. If you're starting to feel that hyperactivity overwhelm you or anxiety, anything like that overwhelm you, you can do it anywhere. It doesn't cost anything. Nobody has to know you're doing it if you're in a crowded room or whatever. You could do it on the sly, shall we say. I love it. And yet it's so often overlooked. 
I'm, thank you for explaining exactly the, how you do that with the extended exhale. Yeah, yeah, it's simple. And like you said, anywhere, you're standing in line at the grocery store, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> and the really beautiful thing is that this conscious breathing practice also feeds into the Shindao, the way of the heart. Because as you become more calm and relaxed, then you carry yourself in a calmer, more relaxed state, which can have an influence on the people in the space around you, right? So contagious. If we're slowing down our breathing, you'll notice, I find it fascinating in some of the team building things I teach and talking about maybe a difficult situation. My first recommendation is slow your breathing down and only speak on the exhale. And people will begin to mirror and match it. It's, it's amazing to me. It's like magic. Yeah, yeah, it is. If any of the listeners out there have ever been to group workshops or group coaching sessions, inevitably there comes a moment where somebody is getting really wound up about something and the energy is getting a little high, maybe a little uncomfortable. And a, a really smart facilitator will say, everybody, just let's all just take a big breath together, right? Everybody... <laughs> Take a nice long breath out. And you feel the energy in the room just like ooh, comes way down again. It it's, happens so quickly. It, it just takes conscious awareness. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't take more than just a couple of breaths, which amazes me. And even if you don't have a smart facilitator, you can do it yourself and you'll be amazed at pretty soon the people around you will start breathing slower and then all of a sudden the people around them will start breathing slower and the emotions will quell down it's it's <laughs> and especially when you uh, do it consciously I almost play this little game in my mind like oh isn't this cool look it's working it's working <laughs> <laughs> so it encourages me to keep slowing my <laughs> breathing down as I like oh this is so cool it's working absolutely it's fantastic it's a great tool a great tool so what are some other tools? I just ran us down that rabbit hole there about, about breathing, and we talked about water and salt. What are some other things that uh, you have found as helpful for your adrenal fatigue? Okay, a lot of people aren't going to like this one, but it really is effective. Eliminate white food from your diet. Hmm. White sugar, white potatoes, white flour. These whites take more to digest than they give you. So they will slow down your system and make you more sluggish. But don't take my word for it. Test it for yourself, right? I thought, yeah, 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 I'm not going to. You know, how hard is that? Really eliminate white flour and white sugar from your diet? You look at the North American diet. Ow, it's pretty scary. It is. And it's sugar is in a lot of things that you wouldn't expect it. You can look at things I know sausage isn't healthy, but look at the back of a sausage sometime. And oftentimes you'll find sugar in there. I'm like, what is it sugar doing in there? It's amazing. All the places that sugar hides, especially. Exactly. Anything that is processed, a hundred percent guaranteed has sugar in it. Uh, start reading labels, folks. I encourage you start reading labels of the foods that you're purchasing. You will be surprised. One of his main recommendations dietarily is to eliminate these whites and watch what happens. So I played with it. I would go for a period of a month, eliminate all that stuff, and then think, oh, I've been good. I can have some, I can have some baked sweets, you know. Oh, we're soul sisters on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been known to cheat and then pay for it. <laughs> And you do, don't you? You notice yes. a drain in your energy. You're yawning after you eat. It's like, oh, I feel like I need a nap this afternoon. Eliminating those things or at least dramatically reducing in your diet will help a lot. The other things that he suggests are when you get to quite an extreme condition like I was in, was being in bed by 10 p.m. and staying in bed till 9 a.m. Wow, that's a long time, it seems, in this day and age, right? Who has yeah, that luxury like... <laughs> of that time? Yet when you're in a position of being that exhausted, it doesn't take much encouragement to have someone give you permission to go to bed by 10, 10 p.m. and stay in bed till 9 a.m. is a godsend because our body is actually building cortisol until 9 a.m. After that, it starts to burn the cortisol. 
And if you're not producing much in the first place, cortisol is like gasoline in the gas tank of your car. How long can you run on an empty tank? Mm. Those fumes don't take you very far. So this is the same thing with the cortisol levels in your body. If you don't allow them to build to their maximum capacity till 9 a.m., if I'm going to find you run out of gas a lot sooner during the day. Getting horizontal for even 10 minutes at a time is really important when you're suffering from low energy levels. Just getting the body into a horizontal position gives it some recovery time. 30 minutes is better. 20 to 30 minutes is great. You don't have to sleep. Just get horizontal. And... Warren Grossman, to be healed by the earth. His story is very, very interesting. Basically, they went traveling. He caught a parasite. They flew him back home to the States. He remembers laying there in this semi-conscious state, hearing the doctors talking about how this man had a couple of days to live. He wasn't going to make it. And he managed to communicate to his wife, you know, you have to take me home. You know, I'm, no, I'm not ready to go. I'm not going to stay here in this hospital and die. Get me out of here. So she took him home and you know, she nursed him to enough health that she felt like she could go to work during the day and kind of leave him there to sleep. And one day she came home and he was laying on the ground in the backyard. And he's like, Warren, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, I'm communicating with the earth. <laughs> She's like, Warren, what are you doing? You need to be in bed. And he's like, no, I just need to be here on the earth. And he did this like for 30 days, he dragged his butt out of bed and he dragged himself out into the yard and he laid on the earth and he just felt himself, his body becoming more and more energized as he connected with the earth. And now science is telling us about the process of earthing mm -hmm. and how the lifestyle that we're living, we no longer have skin to earth contact in days long past. We used to walk barefoot on the earth. And so we were exchanging electromagnetic fields with the earth and between the concrete and the pavement and the rubber soled shoes, we're not doing that much anymore. And so our bodies are continually being drained without being replenished. So I also played with that. Not only when I laid down for 10 or 20 minutes, I would lay down on the earth for 10 or 20 minutes. And it's really, truly remarkable. And again, don't take my word for it, folks. Try it for yourself. Don't believe a word I say. <laughs> Try it for yourself and see what difference that it makes. I always found I felt much more energized after laying on the earth than laying in my bed. So another simple thing that you can do. Again, we come back to that keep it simple, like keep the kiss principle, right? Well, I have found even if I just don't have time to be prone, that just taking my shoes and socks and sort of playing with my toes in either the sand at the beach or in the soil. That's even very refreshing when I don't have time to actually get prone and be there for very long. I just find even five minutes playing in the earth with your toes and your bare feet is a good little <laughs> pick-me-up, short-term pick-me-up. See, there you go. Uh, yeah, you just affirmed that earthing process, right? The earth on skin process that, that we call earthing is really important it can make a big difference take your socks and shoes off get your feet on the earth absolutely but i do have to say in some places where i travel i'm always a little cautious about where i choose to do this uh, there are a few places that i travel where you can almost smell the pesticide and herbicide in the air mm. so i'm always a little cautious about where i use you know, bare skin against earth these days, unfortunately. So choose your own backyard where you know what's in it or something along those lines or nature preserve something along those lines where you know that they haven't been using anything because a lot of parks nowadays use a lot of chemicals on their soil. Great point, Sharon. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. It is, yeah, we have to be conscious, right? We absorb things through our skin. Our skin is the largest organ in our body. Sometimes it strikes me as quite incredible when you look at what's in the bottles of body lotion and hand creams and things that we purchase over the counter and we're applying to our body. If you wouldn't eat it, why would you put it on your skin? Right. And sometimes when I've looked at the back, 
I can't pronounce that either. There's that old saying, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I'm like, I can't pronounce any of this on the back of my shampoo or my lotion either. And I'm always wondering, okay, as you said, and the skin is so absorbent, especially after something like a shower where the pores have been open and then we're putting on these lotions. I'm always like, what is that really doing to the chemical makeup of our body? How is that? Yeah, changing the environment, the internal environment. Yeah, it's just surprising to me what we do to ourselves without even thinking. We're like, oh, well, lotion is good for us. It keeps our skin moist and all of this. But, you know, choose your lotions carefully. Absolutely. Yeah, which is which is another segue into some of the recommendations about adrenal fatigue is to eliminate the number of toxins that you're exposed to, right? Or reduce the number of toxins that you're exposed to. And as you said, what are you doing to your internal chemical balance when we're absorbing the pesticides on the grass through our feet or putting these lotions with indescribable names (laughs) on our bodies? Coconut oil, 100% natural coconut oil is a fabulous moisturizer it's it's a great makeup remover by the way it's a uh, great remover yes you can use it to condition your hair it's a great lip balm you don't need all the other chemical stuff that people are Ooh, i was with a friend at stampede today and we walked by this little booth and i i don't know what the name of the company was but they had this awesome lipstick that won't wear off and you know they do this illustration she puts on the the lipstick and she rubs it and she smudges it and she gets it wet and it won't come off and we're like well okay (laughs) so then how do you get it off we have to use the special remover and I'm thinking oh if that's what you have to do to get it off what's in it to make it stay on like that I don't know and what's in the remover to take it off yeah, those are the questions that oftentimes people forget to ask. They get so intrigued with this idea and they forget that oh, that almost sounds as if it's got to be a strong chemical agent. We need to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll talk more with Tina about this and the Neo principle. I want to know more about this dancing, uh, joyful movement and breathing technique, too, because that sounds so fascinating, too. So we'll be right back. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour. Maybe you don't know I'm also an author. My latest book is for kids. It's Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, a winner of a five-star reader's favorite review. It's perfect for your early reader and a great bedtime story for your young adventurers. Check it out over at PinkyChenille.com. That's P-I-N-K-Y-C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E dot com. 
See you there. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and we're here with Tina Thrussell, and she is the co-founder of the Shin Dao Institute. She is a Shin Daoist and spiritual healer, and she's focused on influencing the world to embrace Shin Dao, the way of the heart, with her life partner, Neil Thrussell. And she is telling us the story of a few years ago when she collapsed with adrenal fatigue, and what was so fascinating to me is when we met and talked a while ago, I was just feeling like, oh my gosh, she was telling me sort of my own life story about being a type A personality. And we were connecting on like, oh yeah, (laughs) recovering perfectionist, recovering this, recovering that. And that really, I hear that a lot from people who have autoimmune conditions, that they at one time were driving themselves harder and faster than I'll say most people. And then they found out that people should. So welcome back, Tina. I've I've been fascinated by the story of your adrenal fatigue and tips that you shared have been awesome. Do you have any other last minute tips that I want to be sure that we get in? And then I want to find out more about Nia. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me think about, oh yes, we talked about one of the things we talked about was reducing or eliminating toxic factors in your life. So toxic foods, pesticides, things like lotions that have ingredients that we have no idea what they are and can't pronounce, Uh, simplifying life and coming back to basic natural ingredients as a way to help support the body because every toxin that we're exposed to is just putting another drain on the system. Along with that idea of removing toxins from your life is removing toxic people from your life. Oh, yes, sister. (laughs) Bravo. (laughs) Yeah, adrenal fatigue is as much when you've when you've done some of the physical things, and it helps to work with some recovery. Oh, yes. Another simple one segue. Licorice root. Licorice root somehow feeds the adrenal glands in a way that is indescribable. So purchasing ground licorice root and making a tea and drinking that several times a day and getting lots, excuse me, lots and lots and lots of vitamin C. These two factors are very, very important to help nourish the and replenish the adrenal system. Yeah, but I want to put in a little comment. These are not red twizzlers. These are not red vines. (laughs) (laughs) This is red licorice root, which is different, guys. Okay, this is not, you know. (laughs) <laughs> the red and black licorice from the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. No, no, not licorice not candy. Not nibs. Nibs. None of those things. No, no. Yeah, she's not taking of nibs and putting it in her water and calling it licorice tea. No, that's no, not no. how. <laughs> no, that's definitely not how. That's adding a whole lot much more sugar, which, as we mentioned earlier, is what you want to eliminate from your diet. No, pure raw licorice root and making licorice root tea from that and drinking that several times a day is awesome to help replenish. So to come back about removing other toxic factors like toxic people from your life, once you've gotten to a certain level of doing these physical things and you start to recover some of the body functions a little more readily, you might feel like you hit a plateau, which is what happened for me. And then I realized, okay, so we've done some some things to help boost and support the body, but now we got to get to the real root cause of what's going on. What is draining those adrenals? And it's really this thinking brain that's draining those adrenals. It's that constant go, 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 got to get done, got to achieve more, push, push, push. It's the seeing how much more there is to do rather than looking at how much has already been accomplished. It's about learning to change perspectives in life in a really huge way. This is how you become a recovering type A personality as you learn to shift how you look at life. And one of the ways is to look at what is really draining you. Who is really draining you? Who are the people in your life that you feel exhausted after spending time with? You want to work at spending less and less time with those people. I want to add a little something thing in there, Tina, too, because it's not just exhausted with. I've found if you ever find yourself saying, ouch, internally, 
like when when you're around someone you're like oh ouch they say something they're snarky they're this or that or you feel like you've been wounded in some way then you know that's a toxic person you shouldn't feel that you shouldn't feel like you're walking and talking on eggshells around people mm-hmm. you should be able to be yourself and so it's not just this feeling of exhaustion it could be a number of feelings but if you find yourself going hmm that just didn't feel right yeah consider try spending a little less time with that person and see if that changes absolutely well said sharon thank you for expanding on that there's also the uh the idea of looking at what is it about that person that makes you go out and feel drained and start to observe what types of languaging, what types of thinking, what types of ideas drain you and start to look at how is, is it really what that person's saying or is it your perspective how you take what they're saying. You're so right about toxic people. One of the things I want to jump in here with is this story that I have of uh, one thing that's so surprising. Sometimes toxic people surprise you. You don't think they're toxic, but then your friends tell you they're toxic. And that's mm-hmm. what happened to me one time. I met someone, liked hanging out with them, would have dinner once a week with them. And one thing I did notice at dinner was always the waitress was wrong, the food was wrong, this was wrong, that was wrong. And I noticed after some other friends pointed out to me one time, they said, you know, Sharon, you're getting more and more negative. And I didn't realize that sometimes this is contagious and you don't realize that they're toxic in a way that you're actually picking up those same vibes and starting to go through the world as they are. So it's sometimes you're saying things that you're going like, ouch, that hurt. But then other times it's more stealth and you're picking it up and you're not realizing until someone else points it out to you and said, well, Sharon, you know, you seem to be more critical of everything these days. What's going on? Absolutely. You're right. It, it, again, it comes down to consciousness, which is the foundation of the Shindel living the way of the heart. I mean, we want to live from our heart and it takes having a conscious mind of awareness to be able to do that to be aware of what we're thinking, what we're saying, of be aware of how thoughts and words affect us. And looking at our perspectives, as you say, if we, it, it's wonderful that you had good friends who are willing to point out to you that you are getting more negative. It can be tricky to catch that on our own, right? Yeah, absolutely. I do have a rule about friends. I just want to chime in. I have two kinds of friends. I have the friends that will love you regardless. They'll say, no, those pants don't make you look fat. doesn't matter. They don't, you know, they just say nice things regardless. And I love those kinds of friends and I have them. I adore them. And then you have other friends who are just like, they're blunt and they're honest. And those you need too in your life, you need both types because there's sometimes you just want to be told everything's great. And there's other times when you really appreciate the friends that just are like, Sharon, hello (laughs) because you need both of them absolutely we need the reality check in our lives sometimes right yeah definitely eliminating some toxins from our life can really help support our health help support our adrenal system making a list of the circumstances the people even the circumstances and situations that we put ourselves in that leave us feeling, as you said, maybe not exhausted, but feeling like, ew, that didn't feel so good. I actually didn't really enjoy that at all. So examining why am I engaging in this if I don't get any enjoyment out of that? And start to really pay attention and clean up your life, right? In, in a lot of ways, in terms of getting rid of what doesn't feed your soul, what doesn't feed your heart, so that you feel good from the inside out. Mm, that's so true. And sometimes it takes getting rid of people, as you mentioned. <laughs> you can do that in a loving way. <laughs> we need to take a quick commercial break while you guys ponder who might be, who that might be on your list, if you have anybody. I can always think that I always must have one somewhere, but we'll find out. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. 
be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. Hi, this is Sharon. Recently, I delved into the world of children's fiction with the Pinky Chenille series. If you haven't had a chance to check out Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, go over and check it out at PinkyChenille.com. That's Pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, Chenille, C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E.com. Thanks. See you there. Your Conscious Lifestyle on Steroids. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Om Times Experts program. With Om Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.omtimes.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day, and most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if? We thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing. So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at ProjectForgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour, Surviving to Thriving. And we're here today with Tina Thrussell. I always kind of trip over her name. I'm so sorry, Tina. And she is the co-founder of the Shindao Institute. And some of the things we've been talking about is her experience with recovering from adrenal fatigue. And now she is just absolutely in that thriver category. She just has positive energy, as you've heard, and contagious enthusiasm about everything. Tell us more about Shindao. And also, I want to know more about this Nia. That sounded so fascinating, this mixture of dance and everything like that. How did that help you recover? Well, Nia, it was developed back in the early 80s by a couple who were aerobics instructors, right? In the the height of the 80s aerobics world, where it was all this high impact, jump, jump, pound, pound, they found that they were experiencing a lot of body breakdown, and they thought, there's got to be a better way to get in shape. And there's a really long story attached to it, but in the end, they ended up observing a lot of different movement forms and started to create a fusion that blends the energies of three dance arts. So we have uh, modern dance, Duncan dance, and jazz dance, and the energies of three martial arts, Aikido, Taekwondo, and Tai Chi, and the energies of three healing arts, the Feldenkrais method, the Alexander technique, and yoga. And by blending the energies of these nine different movement forms, we create a really holistic movement form that's about moving your body's way, about finding the joy in movement, about coming home to your body. So I was introduced to Nia by a colleague who just sent me this little two-liner description one day on the sly. She said, oh, and by the way, I'm a Nia teacher. I think you'd really like it. It's this barefoot dance-based movement to music that really frees your spirit. Why don't you come and try a class? And I was just like totally bit on that hook, line, and sinker. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds so delicious. I got to go. And it was at a point in my life where I wasn't really expressing my creativity in any kind of artistic 
way. So it had extra appeal from that aspect. So I went to this class and we were dancing in a way that I had never danced in any kind of group fitness. I mean, our arms were up in the air and we were moving our hips a lot. And I actually found that I had tears just rolling down my face halfway through the class. And by the end, I was outright weeping. And it wasn't, it wasn't sadness. It was, mm, what's the word? It was relief. It was joy. It was like, wow, I feel like I've come home to my body. This is amazing. And I was just like, wow, what is this? What are we doing? You know? And so she gave me a little bit of history of Nia and said, we're going to be having a training. There's a seven day white belt intensive program this summer would you be interested in doing the training? And I went, wow, I don't know. That sounds really enticing. And she said, it's in this incredible personal growth program that you can't even begin to imagine. So I enrolled thinking that I was doing this for myself. And about day three, they say, you know, and by the time you're done this course, you could actually apply for a teacher's license and, and start to teach this. And I'm like, well, no, there's no way I'm going to teach this. I just, I really want to, I'm, I'm learning a lot about how my body moves and how good it feels to move to music in these kinds of ways. And well, needless to say, day seven, I was signing the contract. <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh, 12 years ago now. And Nia just brings such joy all of my students and I have some students who have been dancing with me since the very first day I started teaching so there is a real love not only and I, I feel so blessed every time they say this at the beginning of the year I have everybody stand in a circle and I say you know who's new who's returning what's brought you back and the people who say well, I love Nia, I love the dance, I love the music, but most of all, I love Tina. And I'm like, oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> well, we do love Tina. <laughs> so That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, I, I, I do try to bring a very spiritual aspect to it. And in in speaking to the freedom of the spirit, there's something about when you combine movement and music, you really create magic right? There is this triad. And Mia is based in a lot of these triads where we look at how everything in life is very inter interconnected. And what started as a fusion fitness reality has actually become a philosophy, a way of life, principles for living. And as you progress through the belts, because they've borrowed from the martial arts system to take you through a belt system, I'm now a brown belt in Mia that you just have a deeper experience of living life, of being more mindful. And I believe it was Nia combined with running into adrenal fatigue that led me down the path of becoming a mindfulness teacher. They're all so beautifully interconnected and they all feed to help type A's recover <laughs> from being a type A and find a greater peace and joy in life. There's less manicness and more stop and smell of roses in my life than I ever could have imagined there would be a dozen years ago. Wow, that's a beautiful, thank you for sharing that, Tina. One of the things I hear from people just diagnosed is hopelessness and like it's never going to be the same. And I've often said, no, but you don't want what got you here. <laughs> it shouldn't be the same. And I can raise my hand and say several positive things that came after my diagnosis as well. So thank you for sharing that. There was a transformation and a release and an absolute change for the positive. That's, oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. We're, believe it or not, when we get, Tina and I get together in, oftentimes we see each other at events and things we both travel for our work and we're just down to the last couple of minutes so tina i want everybody to know about you find out about the institute and the kind of work you do and how to get a hold of you okay well the shin dao shin means heart and dao means the way so we're about living the way of the heart understanding as i said that 
the joy of life, the, the peace and contentment in life comes from following your heart, following the passion in your heart, using your head as a guide, but stepping out of intellect, intellectual, purely logical based thinking and living from a place of intuition, of kindness and compassion and love as much for yourself as for others. And so we guide people into this place of living the way of the heart. And you can uh, find us through our website, shindao.com, so S-H-I-N-D-A-O.com. And I do one-on-one -on -one work with people, either in person, by Skype, by phone. We have uh, group programs. This August 2018, we're taking people into nature for a four-day sacred journey. Um, just an amazing experience where people are out in a talk about keep it simple. We get back to basics in nature. We sleep in teepees. We have a sweat lodge for clearing. A 24-hour vision quest where you spend time sitting with yourself in nature Boy, if you don't get to hear your heart then, when there's no <laughs> no technology, there's no one talking to you, just your head. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm thinking instant. Uh, so I'm I'm wondering how many people might just panic at that thought. You know, I have putting the phone away for just a few hours. Sometimes people freak out. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is an amazing experience, and people come out really transformed. We have a whole number of activities that build upon each other. And in that building, there is an opportunity to experience the true essence of who you are. Like beyond all of that crazy thinking mind, behind all the, the tendencies and, and, and preferences and opinions that we have, who are we at our core? So it's an opportunity to touch that and, and to get connected to the love that is in our heart and that can form the basis for a love-filled life, a joyful life. And we're really excited to share that. That's also on the Shindao site. The website, we'll have that up on understandingautoimmune.com, everyone, the Shindao spelling of it and how to get a hold of Tina because that's important and being able to find out more about it. And be sure and go over to understandingautoimmune.com and sign up for Courage Club if you want to get the transcript. We have almost all the transcripts, not all of them, but Tina's will be up there as well as uh, the other recent shows. So you can be sure. And if you've heard anything and you want to look it up, just sign up and get the transcript as well. Have that with you and have it available. And Tina, thank you so much for sharing your story. We hadn't had the op opportunity to explore adrenal fatigue, and I'm glad we did because it's and the story of going from what I just called survivor to thriver. You are absolutely one of us in sharing the story of coming out the other side as an absolute thriver. So bravo. And everyone, join us next Friday night, 7 p.m., for another episode of the Autoimmune Hour. And have a great weekend, whatever your adventure. Enjoy. The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. You've been listening to Life Interrupted Radio. To learn more, listen to other shows, and gain free resources that can help empower your life, be sure to stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. To get your free four-minute guided meditation to relax, refresh, and renew in just four minutes, and who doesn't have four minutes? Stop by mindfulnessinactionbook.com now. This guided meditation is in handy MP3 format so you can use it anywhere, anytime. Download it now at mindfulnessinactionbook.com. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? 
Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Hi, this is Sharon. And of course, you know me from here on the autoimmune hour. Maybe you don't know I'm also an author. My latest book is for kids. It's Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, a winner of a five star reader's favorite review. It's perfect for your early reader and a great bedtime story for your young adventurers. Check it out over at PinkyChenille.com. That's P-I-N-K-Y-C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E.com. See you there. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day. And most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if? We thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing. So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at projectforgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness.